Hello everyone and welcome back to our smart object tutorial. In the first episode we went through the basic files that are required to create a smart object and uh, explained what they did and how you use them. And in this episode we're going to show you actually putting in the behavior of sitting down in a chair. So let's go through that now. Okay, so last time we were here, we done all the setup for our smart object. We've now got to code in our behavior to actually do something. So we're going to go into our behavior tree we made last time. And we'll make sure our Blackboard asset has been assigned SO Blackboard. Because we need access to that smart object claim handle key that we added uh, in the last video. So in here, we need to create a couple of tasks. The first task we're going to create a blueprint base for. And I'm just going to put it in here and we'll do BT task and we'll do uh, the first one we'll do as a uh, find smart object. And then there'll be another one to use a smart object, but let's create that one first and then go to new task, blueprint base, BT task, use um, object. Uh, smart object, we'll call it. Okay, and that's them actually pushing the button, sitting down, so on. So let's start with the finding. So in the find, uh, we need to add the execute AI. And in here, we're going to get our Blackboard and store our Blackboard so we have a reference to it. Because we'll be writing to it later on, and we don't want to drag a big line across our graph here. So we're going to go to our controller, get the Blackboard that the controller has. And just promote it to a variable. Just can make life a little bit easier for us. Okay. So the next thing we need to do is we need to take to find smart objects. So we're going to go and get our smart object subsystem. And you'll see here at the bottom, get smart object subsystem. And this gives you access to all the smart object stuff. So from there, we can do find smart objects you've got object or objects plural we're going to do the plural one and in here we've got define a request here so if i drag this out and do make request you're going to see a couple of things we need to do here let me just drag this down here get a bit tidier um there we go so we've got a query box and a filter so the query box is basically the area that you're going to be querying and searching for smart objects and this is done in world coordinates so we need to make it relative to our uh, pawn, the over here controlled pawn, to their location. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get their controlled pawn and get the actor location from it. And I'm going to take that and add a vector to it. And we're going to add a, a wide, large vector. We'll do like something like 2,000 by 2,000 by 2,000. 2000? Yeah. And this one, we're going to do um, subtract 2000, 2000. So my pawn's in the middle. Ooh. Like that. And we now need to make this a box. So the query box here, we can do make box. And it's quite simple. We just plug in the min, which is the minus one, and the max, which is the addition one. There we go, we made defined a box. So the next thing you need to do is create the filter. So you're going to drag out from the filter and do make smart object request filter. And over here, you've got tags you can add to it. And you've got the behavior definition classes. So we're going to drag from here and do make array. And from that array, we're going to choose our gameplay behavior, smart object behavior. Okay. The tags here user tags and activity ta requirements these tags are used to help filter out which smart objects you're looking for okay so maybe there's a size requirement or weight requirement or um uh, cost requirement like anything like that and you can assign tags to them using the gameplay tag system um to assign them and fetch them and if i go back to our smart object definition you can see that on there uh, it's over here. You see the active uh, activity tags there, and the slots also have their own activity tags. Uh, so that's referring to uh, this activity tags here. Okay. 
So we're not going to do anything with them right now. Um, maybe in the future we will, but right now we don't need to do that. Okay, so once it's found all the smart objects, you're going to get the array of objects it's found within that area. So the first thing we'll do is we're going to just promote that to a variable and hook it up to the rest of our code. Next, we're going to check that it's actually found anything. So we go is valid index and leave it at zero. And that's just going to check that it's basically got something in there. You can either do that or you can also do an is empty check or is not empty check. Um, either way, same, same deal. So we're going to put that in there like that. And if it's false, we're going to take it to end the task. And we end task, if you remember, from our previous videos with a finish execute. But it won't be successful. Okay, it's not successful in finding finding anything, so that's quite important. Um, so next thing we need to do is we need to claim that spot. Now I mentioned in the previous video when I'm talking about what smart objects are, the what thing that makes them really useful is that AI can claim a spot, so other AI won't try and reach it. So what we need to do is get our smart object subsystem again, paste it in, and we're going to use the claim function, and we'll place that in there. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pick one at random. Um, you can do all sorts of things with the results to figure out which one you want to do, like which one they may prefer, look for distance maybe. But we're just going to do a random one for now and put that in there. Okay. So that's going to give us a claim handle. Now we've heard the term claim handle before. That's on our behaviors blackboard or claim handle key. So let's go back to our find smart object and we're going to promote that to a variable briefly and call it claim handle like that. And then I want to check to see whether it's a valid smart object claim handle. Is valid smart object claim handle. If it's not, we want to put that into a branch and on the false, finish execute again. And then, well, what's going to happen? It will just search again and, and keep looking for a random one until it finds one they can make, make use of. Okay, so it's going to try and claim it. Then we're going to check if it's valid, and if it is, great. We're going to move it on. Now, if it is valid, we're going to set the value of our Blackboard key in there. So we need to get our Blackboard, which we've got over here. See, much better than dragging a big line across. And we can do from here set value as and in here you should see so claim handle click there and put into true now the value is going to be the chosen claim handle so we're going to just drag that into our value and the key name is from our blackboard so just going to copy the clean na claim name key name sorry and put that on a make literal name Okay, so that go in there, and next we're going to do is just hit the finish. So we're going to do finish execute. It's found one successfully, so tick the success box, and that's all you need to do for here. Okay, so it's just the process of searching and finding a smart object. So let's recap what's going on here. We are first of all trying to tell our smart object system to find all the smart objects within a given range. The range is decided by the actor's location and a box around them. And with the filter here, which filters out any tags, at the moment we're not doing any filters, so we can leave that as is. Um, we're then checking that it's not empty, so we've actually found something. If we have found something, we're going to pick one at random, and then we're going to check if that white round one has been claimed. If it hasn't been claimed, we're going to assign it to our claim handle in our Blackboard key. If for anything it has been claimed, it will just cancel, abort, and then try again. Okay, so that is finding a smart object. Now the other task is using the smart object. So this one's a little bit simpler. So you go to functions, override, execute AI. And once again, we're gonna do get blackboard. And from the get blackboard here, we're going to get value as SO claim handle. And plug that in and the key name here is going to be make literal and we're just going to put in the name of it i think i lost it so i need to put it again 
copy, use that. There we go. And then all we've got to do take from this return value is then do use claimed game, gameplay behavior of smart object. And all we have to do in here is on the controller, we have to provide the controller, which we've got over here. And we may want to like do something with it like this. So it's not going through other nodes and making it look ugly. Um, if you want to lock the AI logic so it doesn't do anything else, you can do, you just tick that and leave it ticks and be fine. And at the end here, you've got on like succeeded, fouled, or move or the move to fouled. So the move to foul would happen if something got in its way and stopped it. Um, succeeded, obviously, if it reaches the spot and fouled, if it's unable to reach the spot for whatever reason. So what we're going to look at is on succeeded, and we're going to do finish execute and tick success. Okay. Right. So we're going to go back to our behavior tree. Time to put it on here. So we're going to do a selector into a sequence. And that sequence, we're going to do find smart object. And then we're going to use smart object. And then once it's used the smart object, we're going to tell it to wait for a second. So just wait around. Uh, yeah, five. We'll just do random duration of like three or something. And actually, I'll do random duration of 1.5 and three there. So a little bit random. Um, if it doesn't complete any of these, we want it to just to basically try again or wait for a bit. We'll take it to wait. Uh, we'll take it to wait for like one second. That'd be fine. Okay. And that is it. So now we've got to tell our behavior tree to be ran by our AI. So we're going to go to our AI controller, uh, AI, AI controller for our AI character. So we've got AI NPC. And over here on the begin play, we should have our run behavior tree. And we'll do run the SO behavior. And for now, I'm just going to turn off the perception so it doesn't get confusing. Just test that this works. So now let's go into our world and hit play. And we can see him now walk over to a chair and sit down. Okay. So at the moment, obviously, <clears throat> nothing too fancy because he's not really sitting down at all. He's not staying sitting down. <clears throat> he's also not facing the right way. So what we're going to do in the next episode is show you how you can warp their bodies so they can turn around and animate so they're turning around um, and facing the right way. Um, but let's show this working with multiple AI, with multiple chairs. Um, actually, if I, I'm going to show you with one chair first. So we've got two AI, both are going to do the same thing, but we've only got one chair. So you will see here, one of them will go sit down. The other one won't because there's no chair available. But now there was because he just got up, but he can't now reach it. So he's failing. So got some issues causing that. So let's put in another chair there. And, da -da. and hit play. There you go. They both found a chair. Oh, now using that chair. And you can keep doing this and keep adding more AI and they won't take the spot away from each other. Um, and if you were to go into the debug mode, you can see, if I go into here, there you go. You can see the slot there open up. It's got green, orange, and red. So green means it's open. Orange means it's on. it's being claimed and it's on its way. And red means it's being used. Okay. Um, so yeah, in the next episode, we're going to go through and improve this and make them turn around, make them stay sitting down, and then getting up and walking away of their own accord. So there you go. We've now got our characters walking over to chairs and sitting down in them. Um, but obviously not great because they're not turning around the right way. They're not staying seated. Uh, so we've got a lot to improve on this behavior, which is what we're going to do in our next episode. So next episode, we're going to talk a bit about motion warping and go through how to make our characters turn and animate their turning uh, so they can sit down on a chair properly. Uh, so you can catch that next episode right now over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley, where you can find all my videos early from just $1 a month. Massive thank you to all my patrons and YouTube members for their continued support. It really is amazing. So thank you again so, so much. Make sure you subscribed and I'll see you next time. Bye.